Carol here. Welcome to my craft room and to my LDRS creative project. We're going to be doing a, I think it's an A7, five and a half by seven inch, I think, card and envelope. I think that's the envelope and the card is just a tad smaller. I'm starting with my 140 pound white card stock. We're going to build our own uh, card base. I took, you can take any uh, embossing folder that has flowers on it. That's what I used. Just an edged flower embossing folder and that is going to be the base for the card. The puddle jumper release is fantastic. Getting a lot of wonderful comments from this release and today I'm just going to be using, actually I finished this card on Friday but uh, we had a thunderstorm and that rolls into migraine for me so I was down a few days. Today is up and doing the voiceover day. So here we go. We're going to use the Coming Up Daisy stencil again. I used it on the last project uh, a couple of videos back and I love, love this stencil. I can't say enough about this stencil. I think it's because it has the gate on there. I mean, who can't resist a gate, right? <laughs> yeah, especially one as pretty as this one. Now we're going to take some in this case, in the uh, modeling paste, this one works well with uh, a card because, as you can see, it's thick and creamy and it's flexible, which means when you open and close the card, it is not going to crack. So it's flexible modeling paste. I know that went by quickly, but I didn't want to make this a three-hour tutorial. <laughs> And uh, it's really funny. My friend Pam said in one of the comments that this must be an introduction because my tutorial was only an hour long. <laughs> you know, one of those trailers. That's what she said. A uh, movie trailer because my tutorial was only an hour. That was pretty funny. Look at this stencil. I mean, oh, don't you love it? I mean, this has to be in your stash. This is one of those stencils that just has to be in well, in my case, in my stash, I love it. I've used it twice and I just received the release products and some of them and they're beautiful, beautiful. And the polka doodle set with the bunny, oh, I'm telling you, cute as a bunny. Yes. You have to love a stencil that has three different cuts on it or four in this case. So I decided to use the hills and the houses and trees at the top. And because I'm leaving this, look at it, oh, I'm telling you, it's just beautiful. I decided, well, like I said, I think I said it, it's going to be white and gold on the cover. Just a plain and simple, um, clean, beautiful front on this card. Very exquisite when you do white on white or gold on white. So in this case, I'm going to do the stenciling in white, and then I'm going to do the your uh, 24 karat friend bunny set. That's what I'm calling it. It does have have a good hair day, which I used both of these sentiments on this card. And it was such a fun card. It has some wonderful um, ideas in here that I wanted to share with you on a card. It just makes, gives you that extra something on a card. And we're going to uh, experiment with different papers here. Two of them, actually. We're going to use a, um, let me see, I think it's a 40 pound vellum. We're going to use the 40 pound vellum. On the, then underneath it, we're going to use tracing paper. And I have used tracing paper on many of my cars when you open it up to put the sentiment on. But this time, it is going to be sweet. And I'm not going to share it now because I want to save something for the end to talk about <laughs> when I get there, right? So here we go. Goyges. Now, I'm going to, let me see, measure this out for the card on the back. I did the flip. You know I always put a gusset in there. So this is what I do. I cut it down and then I cut enough to put about a quarter of an inch gusset on here. So I and uh, yeah, don't put the cutter on there, Carol. I end up putting the um, lines in it like um, twice. 
So I'm going to, yeah, I just want to make sure it bends nicely, just, you know, a little ways over there. And instead of using my or board, that's the word, instead of using my scoreboard, I scored it on the actual uh, paper cutter. So two score marks on there so that when I fold it a quarter of an inch down, I'm going to have that little bit of a gusset running across because the inside, it's going to have vellum and the tracing paper. So I just need it to lift up just a tad. So here we go. I'm just cutting it off, making sure it's even all the way around there. Uh, then, I love glitter paper. I just love it. Yeah, you can tell. Just love hearts everywhere. And I end up putting sticky back on that later on, and I'll show you that. It works out much better when you're putting down a little piece of gold at the top and bottom of your card to put uh, some sticky on the back of it and then cut it. And I'll show you that later. I didn't at the beginning. I used glue, but it's much cleaner to put that sticky paper on the back, you know, and then even double-sided rolled out tape would be great. And I'll show you how I do that. I'm just getting situated. Oh, I need to erase a few marks I saw on there. So I'm using my micro eraser. And then if there's any of the uh, stenciling paste that is in the wrong spot, I just take my cutting blade and take it off. Easy peasy. You don't have to redo it. Just go around with your cutting knife, remove it, and move on. Yes. So here, what I'm doing, I'm pretty sure, yes. Uh, obviously, look at my space. I mean, isn't this crazy? I have so much going on. And I have like, I can hardly fit my cutting board there on the space. I always do this. I work my way into about a four by four inch uh, area to work on. And what I did is I put something down, of course, on the post on the end of my gate. But easy peasy fixy wheezy here. Yeah, I had to make it rhyme. And you know me, right, at the day after a couple of day migraine, my brain is just getting situated. It's just trying to start to work again. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if it's good to do a voiceover right after a couple of days being down with the migraine, but I'm giving it a go. I'm measuring it here on the vellum because I am going to fold over the vellum with our beautiful bunny scene on the vellum. So it's going to, and I'm going to make it curve so that we have just a little bit of lift on it. I love the look of a bevel, but we don't want it to be lifted up too high because it's going into the envelope and I don't want any of the gold uh, embossing to come off, So I, but I do want to lift it up. I do want that bevel on there. So what I do is I score again, once again, just one little mark. Um, so actually get two score marks on each side so that we can fold it nicely and have that little gusset again. I'm gusset crazy when it comes to cards, making your own base and doing anything here. So I'm going to measure it and then tick it off with a pencil and then make it twice. You have to be very careful, even though this is 40 pound vellum, you don't want to press too hard or it's going to crack and break. So I just do a light fold two little marks so that I have a gusset on each side and then um, yeah I take my micro eraser here and erase the marks off my little tick marks isn't this sweet it's just so tiny and cutesy it makes it enjoyable to do a craft when you have all kinds of uh, little fancy dancy little tools you know and uh, here we go. I got that at uh, my stationery store BD's I'm Canadian so the BD stationery store and uh, yeah, I was drinking iced tea. Yes, I didn't do Coca-Cola. Not, yeah. I could tell it was, when I was working on this card, I knew the storm was rolling in and I was going to be my migraineal. So I didn't go to the pop. I'd went to the iced tea. I don't know if there's a difference. I think it's uh, yopped full of sugar either way. But anyway, that's my new word, yopped. That means it's full. Yes, it's a Canadian word, yopped. It's a carolism. That's what it is. So here we go. Here comes the scene. I'm using my Fiskar stamp press because I can situate it uh, any place I want and then press it down because uh, and it's with uh, the LDRS uh, Versamark and it's not called Versamark. It's called Clearmark, I think. 
by LDRS Creative. It is so juicy. I love it. Then I got out some gold embossing, fine detail embossing powder because I wanted, I didn't want it to have a thick uh, heat set to it. When I went to heat it up, I didn't want it to, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I didn't want it to spread out. Yes, I want it to be fine and detailed on here. Isn't this cute? It has the carrots in the ground. You can't beat gold on vellum. No, 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 no. And uh, it's like, uh, have a good hair day. Is that not cute, a hair day? And I love this bunny looking out. So you have the back of the bunny. Oh, adorable, just adorable. And then see how when I put that sentiment down, the day was crooked? I didn't worry about that because this is what you do when you have something crooked, especially a sentiment with words on it, take an, uh, something uh, to offset the eye going in the opposite direction. In my case, I took the carrot. It has the carrots in the ground and this adorable little cute carrot that stands alone and I'm going to place it down going the opposite way and it tricks the eye to... Uh, you know, it doesn't know where to go. It doesn't know where whether to look at the crooked carrot or the crooked word. <laughs> so it kind of sets it straight. You know, the old brain's going, wow, that looks straight to me. And look at that. You can't even tell. It looks like I raised up the word day. It doesn't even look like I, you know, uh, had a crooked day on my Fiskar stamp press. No. And I decided that orange tape, oh yes, I needed some real good sticky here. So I went to the orange tape on each side. I didn't want it to come off, but we are going to put cardstock on the back. You know me, I have cardstock on, on every side because I like the thickness and I love the weight of the card when you do that. And you don't want to see this tape in the fold on the back, obviously, right? So yes, I am going to use a piece of paper on the back and it is watermark watermark LDRS embossing um, sticky stuff yes paste like a versa mark but really really juicy oh it's really nice to work with look at that is that cute or what then I'm going to release the stickiness on here and we're going to put it on the front with the lift you can see the gusset here uh, with the camera and this stuff is sticky I mean you have to really be careful or you're hand is going to be stuck and then you're going to put your hand on the card in my case probably and get that sticky somewhere else then dirt will get on it it's just a card making process isn't it once you start and do something uh, that could be just a little air it snowballs and turns into a big one for me every time so here we are we're going to bevel it so you're going to just push it over on the other side and then sticky it down so you have that tiny little, probably an eighth of an inch there on each side, um, or a sixteenth of an inch, which would make it an eighth of an inch lift uh, when you work it out. Isn't that cute? And don't put it down really tight at first, yes, or you end up doing that. I'm just kind of eyeballing it on each side of the fence. I'm using that as my guide post, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, making sure the post on each side is equal with the uh, bellum. And uh, then I stick it down, and it's cute as a bunny. I love it. Look at that. Slide your finger right underneath there. You can see it's just a small bevel, but it's a cute bevel, isn't it? And there, I just saw that there was a little bit that wasn't heat set. So you want to check that as well. And then I'm going to set it down. Uh, probably, I think I'm done with this. I'm not sure what I'm doing here, but... Oh, it's the tape. Now... If you put double-sided tape on the back of your gold paper it, and then cut it in your, on your cutter, on your paper cutter, it's much easier than this because that crazy glue, this is my beacon glue, you can see that, way more affordable than um, the other brand. I'm not going to say, I shouldn't even say brands, but you, you can see it right there on the back of my squirt bottle. So, yeah, there it is. And then it'll dry. You have that little hint of gold at the top, a little hint of gold at the bottom. I think it is just exquisite myself. I love a white on white card and a white on gold card. Just that hint. It's so crazy sweet. This set is good for anything. For a friend card, a birthday card, a sympathy card. Uh, 
it could be wonderful, especially if it's a friend you're sending it to. You've got the sentiment that says you're a 24 karat friend. Isn't that cute? And have a good hair day. I love that, these sentiments. Um, yeah, so here we go. There's the back. Of course, we're going to cover that. And of course, I have to sit there and stare at it. It looks like the bunny's looking over at the city, you know, or the countryside because it has a gate. It's not the city, Carol. You're a country gal. What are you talking about the city for? Yes, I'm just measuring the fold there, making sure everything is as precise as I can. Get it, and then we're moving on. This train is moving on, moving on out. So here we go. Now I have to measure it for the back of the card, and it is 140 pound, which is a real thick weight. You can get the paper, 120 pound paper. You know the black card stock I get at the box store? Well, it says 110 pound, and it is as thick as my 140 pound white. I get this at my stationery store. They hand cut it, and that's why I get the 140 pound weight, because they make um, uh, business cards out of this heavy weight. And so they will cut it down for me, and I buy it, you know, 50 at a time. And then I have the 8.5 by 11 sheets that I can use on the cards. Yeah, that's a long story, isn't it? Just to tell you I've got thick cardstock. <laughs> so here we go, measuring it up, making sure it's all even. And then we're going to put my roll of double-sided sticky on here. And when I did the gold, when I finally thought, oh, no, I don't. I end up getting out the big daddy here and uh, rolling with this of the honking Xyron machine here that I'm using. And this is where I got the idea for the gold. When I put this sheet in, uh, I had some space at the bottom and you don't want to waste that. So I ended up cutting down some of the gold glitter paper on the side, just seeing where I could cut it. This gold, it's just like clear paper. It doesn't have anything that falls off. It's a beautiful gold paper. And uh, it has the glitter, but it doesn't have the bumpies in it. It's totally flat. Uh, yeah, so let's get going. I'm getting serious here. I think I was standing up there. I'm going to cut this off. And look at that. And that sheet is excellent for putting away to do little fine edges on your cards. Just sticky back them, leave it like that, put it in your stash, and when you need some gold trim, get it out. And there you go. Love the Xyron. And especially for the back of a card like this. Yeah, I have the bevel there, so I have to be careful I don't flatten it all out. Like, seriously. And yes, there you go. Uh, I don't know if I have to cut a little bit off. Yes, I'm, be I'm very careful because of the gate. Uh, I don't want to test out to see if it'll crack. <laughs> it shouldn't, but, you know, you want to be careful. And then I'll just take my skizzers and cut that little bit. It just was a little bit there that I had to take off right above the vellum and below the vellum. You can see how I do that. And it doesn't matter. I have that folded edge so I don't have to cut anything off there. I don't even want to try to cut anything off there because I'd cut my vellum for sure and then it would turn into a non-vellum card. Yeah, I don't even want to go there. Just taking a little eensy bit off the bottom with uh, Teflon scissors. I call them my skizzers because that's how I, when I was young, I learned to spell it. I called them skizzers, S-C, and it just stuck with me, you know? Yes, so here we go. Just, there's that little piece, oof. Just cutting it off like that, having that little bit. And I'll show you where I do use it. And then I had to get out my uh, eraser that has that real uh, grindy, gritty stuff there to take that little mark off. I had it because of my red nails. I just slid it across there, but that uh, eraser is fantastic. It almost shines like little diamond chips are in it, and it really does take off a mountain load of air. Here I go. I love this idea of just taking something that has a flat edge and cutting off your double-sided tape. Yes, when I learn something, boy, I just run with it, don't I? It's such a good idea. I had that little block, that acrylic block that I used, but I couldn't find it instantly, but I could find my uh, Tim Holtz eraser there, so I used that. And here we go. We're going to move on now. Here's where the idea comes from. You know, on some of my cards, I put the vellum on the inside, and then I put the same fold in it, 
you know, the quarter inch on the bottom, and then I score it. Now we're going to place this card down, and you want to, I put some double-sided tape already on it, I think. Yes, and I'm just placing it. You want to be very careful. You don't want it above that crease, because remember, this has a gusset mark in it. So just kind of work with it how it works for you, whether it works this way, putting the fine edge to the bottom, or putting the gusset edge to the uh, bottom of your table, and then placing it down. You can tell I was getting real serious here. I didn't want anything to happen when I placed this down because I didn't want to have to take it up and redo it. So there you have it. You can see the beauteous little gusset on the top. And yeah, then you can just work with the tape. If there's a little piece hanging out here and there, cut it off and uh, proceed on with the makings. Now I decided, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. You can cover anything. And there's the fold in it on the inside. We're going to work with that with the vellum and the tracing paper. The tracing paper is beautiful to work with on the inside of a card. Then I went to the old stashiola and got some that bling bling gold um, string, you know, and uh, there's the tracing paper. Isn't that lovely? What I do is I will do a full length tracing paper, score it in the middle, and then put the bling bling uh, gold ribbon on, um, it's not ribbon, it's um, string, kind of like a string, and then I put it back, tracing paper, this is from my store Beaties, uh, up the road, my stationery store, and uh, this is from On a String, that's what it's called, it's probably from the 50s, look at it, I think I got that at a thrift store for sure, and yeah, I'm cutting it off. We're going to score them so it has the quarter inch the same as the score in the actual, um, yeah, here I go. I want the, uh, well, as we proceed, both of them, the vellum and the tracing paper are going to have a gusset, going to be scored, have the tape on it. And that way, uh, and I want to say this, you can do this in vice versa order. Okay, vice versa. You can have the vellum, which is thicker. It doesn't You can't see through it very well. And then stamp your images on the tracing paper and have that on top. And then the vellum um, on the bottom for whatever you're going to add that you want to see. But in my case, I wanted to do the actual scene on the vellum. And then I wanted you to be able to lightly see the carrot garden underneath. Yes, I don't know, that was a handful, mouthful to uh, get out there, but you can see the little wee gusset, just a tiny one little uh, bit over to score it because you want it identical to the actual card base that we created. You don't want to see any of the card base, so I'm taking the tape off. Then I'm putting down the tracing paper first because this is the underneath piece. This is going to give it the illusion of having my carrot garden. And it, it works really well to lift up. It is not as flimsy looking as it looks. Yes, so you have that tiny little gusset. And then we're going to put our carrot garden on this. And we're going to put the string. So you don't, um, the, the reason for the string is to lift up the vellum. And you'll see why I do that. And then when you're stamping your, actual scene, put a card underneath. You don't want to uh, press down and have that image stuck on when you're embossing, stuck on the tracing paper. So I just slid a card, you know, some leftover card stock underneath. Then I'll just, you know, create my scene and it's so cute. You know, I ended up putting your 24 karat friend because I have, I don't know, it looks like 24 carats in my garden. I didn't count it, but let's say there is 24 carrots in the garden. And then we'll do a little scene. And then we'll add a scene with our Versamark pen. We're going to add some grass. So, um, yeah, I'll show you all that after. I needed to make the carrot tops uh, on um, sticky back masking paper. Yes, LDRS Creative has the best masking paper. And I end up doing this, and I used it a few times, and then I just realized I didn't really need to do this. I could just lift my carrots, so I did one with the masking, 
and then one side of my carrot row, my garden and carrot row without it. And you can choose which look you like better once we get it done. And yes, it is a little fussy. That's why they call it fussy cutting. And uh, yeah, I was wondering, boy, how am I going to get this all cut without actually cutting it off? But I did it. I really did. So here we go. Now I'm going to put uh, my, my actual stamp on this tracing paper. Now this is going to be my row of beautiful carrots. Love carrots in the garden. I love anything in the garden. Tomatoes especially. Nice big, ripe, juicy red tomatoes. Yummy. For a toasted mayonnaise tomato sandwich. Could stick some lettuce on it, but I really love the taste of a nice garden uh, tomato tomato. So here we go. I'm setting the first one down and I'm going to put my LDRS, I call it Versamark, but it is my LDRS sticky pad. And uh, I should have it in front of me so I don't keep saying, I need to say the name of it. It's called Watermark. That's what it is, Watermark. And because I don't think I put my powder on here, I forgot again, but I will use it futuristically. So look at that. And then you're going to heat set it. And you know what? Tracing paper, as fine as it is, really does heat set well. So yeah, see? Uh, but I take precautions. I only do a little bit, then pull away my heat tool a little bit, and then pull away just to be on the safe side. I didn't want it to curl. Uh, or it, Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It looks like it. we're getting on there. So now we're going to put the masking uh, on top of this just on the little tops. I realized I didn't need the bottom. I just need a little bit of the tops. Then we're going to add another carrot and work our way up about uh, two-thirds of the way up on the card. Isn't oh, I love the look of tracing paper. Uh, and I love it when you put it in to just put your sentiment on it. I, early on in my early uh, you know, about five years ago when I started doing my YouTube videos, I used quite a bit of tracing paper to do just this, to put it on the inside with the sentiment. Here I'm just being careful to take them off. Then I am going to put some gold on here. I don't know what I was thinking, you know, of not putting my uh, baby powder on there uh, just to protect it from the little wee marks that I have to take, uh, you know, my... Uh, water brush and brush it all off and be careful if you just put your powder on there to protect it you would have been fine. So here we go you can see that's the little uh, acrylic block I used to cut my double-sided tape with because it does it has the sharp edges on it and look at there just uh, you could have put it down more behind the actual um, stems on the carrot they probably have a name for it Let's call it the greenery, the greenery of the carrot. And then I'm just going to move along. I didn't want them to be exactly uh, fit. Yes, they're going in the garden. Oh, yeah. Let's just dig up those carrots. My four, 24 carrot carrots. Yes, I, I was going to say 14 carrot. No, I, let's move it up to 24 carrot. Make it a softer gold. Yes. So here we go. We're just going to have our little rows on there. And then I realized because it's, you know, the vellum is 40 pound on top of this, I'm going to color the carrots and the stems so that you can see it's more noticeable when I put the scene on. Now I have the vellum over top because I need to situate the bunny. And here we go. Underneath here, I'm going to put a fine line. Now this would have been much better if I had to cut that gold paper uh, off. I didn't even think of it then putting down the tape because, I don't know, I think it would have worked with this beautiful twine, this gold boing boing twine. You know, it stretches out and then it boings back. I love it. And to get this straight look, you just put a card grab a piece of cardstock, uh, my 140 pound because it's a little thick, and then yeah I'm just taking the glue off with my knife on here because you don't want that uh, paper, you know, your tracing paper to stick down. But I did want to raise it up so that's why I'm putting this uh, on there. I just took my cardstock as you can see, another piece of cardstock, push it up and you're all set. 
Now once this dries, we're just going to set that, cut it off, set it aside, and when it dries, we're going to bring it across both the tracing paper and the vellum and tie it to the left side in a bow and you'll see how we do this. This makes it perfect when you have some cardstock for leveling it across and making it a straight line. So here you have it. It's cut off and we'll proceed. It also, when you close it, you want to check that the bottom is level, right, with the card because you have put a lift on that so you're going to have to cut it off at the bottom. I just did it with the scissors it was nice to see that I had a little lift on the carrots on the bottom. So I'll just go across it. Tracing paper is very easy to cut and get a straight line. Super duper easy. I didn't want to risk putting it in the cutting, um, the, uh, your cutting board. So I just uh, cut it with the scissors and we're going to move forward. So here we go. Love my bracelet there, Gail. You can see I'm wearing it. It's so pretty. So here we are. We're just going to color these in because I just wanted a hint of seeing the carrots behind the vellum. See how you get that? So pretty. And then when you color in the carrots on the tracing paper, it's just sheer elegance. I just love tracing paper. Sometimes it works uh, as a substitute for your vellum. You know, especially on the inside of a card when you can just fold over a piece of beautiful ribbon, then put the sentiment on the tracing paper because it's almost like a in-between parchment paper, you know, having a hard card stock and then, you know, the middle line would be parchment because you have those lines in there and uh, then you have the tracing paper, which is so nice. So we're going to work with the vellum. You can see that it is 40 pound. It's not as see-through as some vellum is, and we're going to do the image. Is this bunny not the cutest bunny ever? And um, I already told my story how I bought that bunny from the, it was from Michael's, and it was like $47 or something. Here's my Prisma pencils, just like color them with butter. Yes, they're so soft and pretty to do a scene on vellum. So I turn it over. You can do it either side. I must do the front of this because I want you to be able to see the color. So I don't think I turned this one over. I did. Oh, I did. Whoa, yes. Boy, I am a creature of habit, aren't I? And I bought that. Anyway, I bought this bunny and then I got it home and realized that the reason why it was half price is they didn't, he didn't have any ears. His ears fell off, so they put a hat on him. <laughs> You will see that I use him for my pictures at the end with my card and my envelope. I'm just making little cheeks. Love the colors in Prisma colors. They're so soft and pastel, some of them, you know. Look at that. Then when you turn it over, you get that look. You can color each side. If you want to have it vibrant and just pow at you and have that beautiful color, do it on the right side of the uh, vellum. If you want a soft look, reverse the vellum and do it on the inside, and you'll get that soft look. I do remember I did do it on the front side. I think of the carrots because I needed to see it. I needed them a bit more vibrant. So on the front of the tracing paper, I did color them in on the outside. So here we go. Just adding some. Actually, I use white and gray. I will use the gray uh, pencil for the shading of the bunny and I'll use the white. You can see, I don't know if you can notice, there it is. I decided to go in on the front. I knew I did to make it really vibrant. It just wasn't vibrant enough doing it on the back. I'm pretty sure, I don't know. I have to see this one when I do it because, you know, it's been a couple of days uh, because of the crazy migraines. So, um, yeah. So I'm just coloring it here. I know I do switch it up. Isn't that cute? Yeah, it is on the inside. It is on the inside. I just put a more pressure to my coloring. That's what I did. Yeah, look at that. Is he not the cutest little bunny you've ever seen? I'm not kidding. I know I'm going on and on. This is the cutest bunny set I've ever seen. And uh, yeah, see how you get that, um, I don't know. It's 
it's bright, but it doesn't show through. Now, if you had black paper underneath it, here we go. See how I'm doing the front because you have to look through that 40 pound vellum. So I am going to do the front coloring on the tracing paper. There we go, yes. Let's get in the garden and work up our lovely carrots. <laughs> She's crazy, yeah. So here we go. It's wonderful. It's just wonderful to be uh, doing this voiceover and using these Eldera's creative products. Now see it behind the black paper. I wanted you to see that. If you wanted that coloring to pop out, do it on a black card with vellum. And uh, here, when you lift this, you're going to get that colored look. And of course, we're going to have to do the gate. Now here, I mixed a tiny bit of the modeling paste with the clear modeling paste. This is clear, and then I didn't want it so you didn't see it. I didn't want, I wanted just a little bit, so I mixed them. I put mostly the clear embossing. You can see my ratio there, probably two thirds to a third. And um, because I did want you to see it, that's Dreamweaver's clear embossing paste. And I'm just going to mix it up enough on this piece of paper that I get the gate to have just, it's not fully transparent. It just, you know, you can see it, yet it's not as um, thick as using full on embossing paste. So I'm just working it here. Ooh, yeah, just like icing on a cake. I think that's why stencils are just so wonderful to work with. Yeah, and then I'm gonna put that away, lift that up, and look at the, I love the look of this, very vintagey, very, wait till you use your heat tool on the vellum with just adding a little bit of um, modeling paste, just normal modeling paste to the modeling, clear modeling paste is wonderful. You just get that, I don't know, country gate look so nice. I had to use a little bit. I had to take a little bit off. It was too high. I really wanted it to just be there, but yet not be there. You know what I mean? I didn't want it to stand, to be raised up too much. So I took a little bit off, then a baby wipe on the bottom just to clean it up. It's a gate. It's wood. I love the look that it does look like wood. I'm leaving it white. I'm not going to color it at all. Just leave it white and uh, when you heat set it, oh, it's gorgeous. Uh, you want to heat set it front and back so it doesn't um, wobble out on you. And then we're going to add some grass under the bunny's little feet with the Versamark pen. I'm actually going to use my Versamark pen properly. And you can see how I just take, something must have been on my fingers and it has the oil on the um, vellum. Well, I just took a baby wipe and took it off. It just wiped down perfectly. And you can see behind the gate, you've got the carrots. And uh, yeah, I was really happy with uh, the design of designing this card. It just all came to play. It my you know, it just came to my mind. Uh, everything to use. I didn't struggle with the design at all. I just looked at that gorgeous polka doodle stamp set. It's got it has 16 stamps in it and it's three and a half inches by two and a half inches that bunny so he's a good size then I'm going to get out my good scissors to uh, cut some paper off especially working with vellum I did not want it to woo flowers I didn't want it to um, fray you know for my and then there's that little uh, hand press I bought that separately uh, at a clearance uh, over at uh, Sharon's store a long time ago and I just found it and I thought yeah I'm one of those treasures you have in your stash so I stuck it on the acrylic block you can see here oh yeah I didn't press well enough but if you have a gold pen I end up putting um, like you just can't see the end of the sentiment I ended up being really Oh, bold here and putting the press. I just put the uh, watermark on the end, just the end of the word, put my big head over it. Oh, yeah. And 
there you have it. And it went right on there. It was great. I had to take my cutting knife just a little bit for fr um, friend, you know, but it really did come out okay for putting your, you know, having the nerve to put it over top of an already stamped image. And then I took a gold pen for the carrot stems and uh, just filled it in with the pen. Yeah, just taking some of it off before the little marks um, that were left. I'll take it off with my brush and my little paintbrush. And yeah, friend, it looks great. Then I just went in with my knife. That cutting blade, your, your cutting blade is nice for taking off anything, especially on vellum. It just slides right off. I'm going to show you that. So the D was too thick. So I just, you know, looked at the stamp set on how the font was and then just removed what I had to with my cutting knife. And then I took a gold pen and uh, added it. I'm going to color it first, obviously. Um, yeah. I, yeah, and there's the gold. This is the Signal Broad Tip Gold Pen. They come in gold and silver and the white. And then I'm going to use two shades of the orange here. I think it looks really pretty colored in. And because I already stuck it down over top of the tracing paper, it's we're going to have a nice, easy peasy uh, bow on there. Isn't that nice? This is where we come. I've already... Uh, we come to making a bow. Then I made a little bow out of the set. It has this little cute little bow in there. And then I fussy cut it out and it's going to, I'm going to make two of them. One's going to be on the carrot because it's so feminine. She's so cute. It goes right there on the bunny. But I'm going to lift it and put it on the carrot. It just looked cute on the carrot for some reason. And then I put one on top. See, it just went there. It was made for right there on top of the carrot. And then I'm going to have one on top of the bow with their boing boing string, the gold. And uh, I'm going to tie that, the bow, and I'm going to tie the bow. Oh, here's my Versamark. I'm just flicking up some grass blades with the Versamark pen. Then I do it all the way across the bottom of the gate and inside the gate. Just put little marks inside the gate because We've got grass behind there, so you just put little bits of marks in there, and look at that. Grass. Go as high as you did underneath the bunny. You'll see how I do that on the gate there. Oh, I didn't go up too high, I guess. I just did the bottom line and a little bit on the top. There you go. Isn't that pretty? Just love it. And, uh, yeah, just the design of this card just came together for me. I love that when you see a stamp set and everything just, you know, comes to your mind. It's so pretty. And over on LDRS Creative, uh, check out Facebook and all of the uh, Instagram and all of the designers have such wonderful cards on there using, um, you know, the designers using this. And they also have cards, you know, with those that uh, purchase the sets and go on and do tutorials yeah lots of tutorials by our designers and cards to get inspiration and i'm just very thankful to be a part of that uh so here we go it's uh i'm gonna put yes look at this just put that ruler across there cut it off take your skizzers and chop her down so it's nice and even lift it up Oh, that's sticky. Now that's going down to cover the actual fold in the card. And always remember, you do have a little bit of room there. And what I was going to say is, I'll go back to that. You put a little um, mini dot. These are the micro mini dots. And I put it underneath the bow to hold it down while I'm doing the long bow to look like his ears. It was intentional to make this bow hang down to uh, look like the little bunny's ears. It's just, oh, I just love designing this card. And yeah, I had to do this probably about 16 times. Um, yeah, not 14, but 16 times. No, let's go 17 times, make it an uneven number. And then I'm going to cut the end off here even, and look at how the bow looks like the bunny ears. Is that cute or what? Yeah, it's so funny about me buying that 
beautiful little bunny and, and, and his ears aren't there. My daughter-in-law caught that. Um, did you know that that bunny has no ears? I'm going, what? And then I realized the ears must have fallen off, so they put a hat on him. And I, at the store, did not even notice the bunny didn't have ears. How crazy is that? For a detailed person on my cards, I didn't catch that detail. <laughs> a bunny with missing ears. That's a biggie. Now I'm going to cover the back, the inside, all of the card with my card stock so it's nice and thick. I'm just going to take my mechanical pencil, make some little marks, take it over to my cutting cutter, and put everything away. Look at that. I actually have room. I actually have room, and the reason why I did clean it up is because I'm making an envelope, a matching envelope for this uh, card. So, uh, yeah, I needed to have more room than I did have. There's the front. You have the bevel. There's the inside seam. And on the tracing paper, you have the carrots behind there. Just a hint of the carrots. Oh, I love it. And like I said, you can reverse the process to your scene on the tracing paper and then have the vellum on the bottom. That way you're going to see those carrots are going to just stand right out. Yes, I'm putting the double-sided roll of uh, sequin tape on the inside so that I can put um, yeah, another drink of my uh, iced tea. And then I'm going to take this off and put down my other layer, remembering to lower it just a tad because you want to put it on the line. Your, uh, excuse me, sticky, you know, he just has to walk right by there. Yeah. And now I'm going to take off some of the, I just think he's adorable. We're going to take off some of the uh, glue and just love the look. I love that hanging bow actually. And then uh, we're going to put a bow on it. So I end up, yeah, I'm trying to think, should I do another one? Oh, I put the little um, ladybug on the top of the um, fence in gold. I'm trying to use as much of the actual set as possible and it has hearts. I'm going to use those uh, on the scene here. I'm going to put little hearts. Well, actually, I do it on the envelope. I use a lot of the stamps on the envelope because this bunny stamp, like I said, has 16 actual stamps in the set. And yeah, then take your pokey tool and go through it so you can take off some of the melted gold on there. You want it to look like a little, um, it's a ladybug actually. It's a ladybug. So you want to make it look like it has actual win wings on there because when you heat set it, it tends to all come together. So while it's warm, just take your cutting knife or your pokey tool. And then I grabbed a little diamond, a tiny little diamond, just to stand off of the little eye on my um, ladybug. Isn't he cute? And it has little wee dots in the wings, so I just took it out with my pokey tool. See the little dots going up? Cute, cute, cute. Love this scene, if I do say so myself. Even though I created it, I think it's rather pretty. And uh, very elegant. Very elegant, thick, heavy weight on there. And there's, I'm putting another glue dot, pulling it over, putting the bow on the top. It, I just had to. And... I just think, yeah, I'm just putting that glue dot all down inside. Love the hanging bow, don't you? It looks like the bunny ears. I mean, come on, isn't that sweet? Love this set. Oh, yeah. And then just wait it out to see what hangs over, what doesn't. And I had to lower it a little bit so it would close properly. But look at that. So crazy sweet. Beautiful. You're a 24 karat friend, C-A-R-R-O-T. Love it. This was just an ingenious design on this card, yeah. I may have to cut that off. I'm going to wait and see when everything dries. There it is, my glitter with the double-sided tape on it. It's perfect, look at that, I just took it off. No glue, nothing. It just went on the bottom. That's why I didn't cut anything off the papers that were overhanging a tad because of having the gold on the bottom. I wanted to wait and see, you know, how it looked. I'm showing you the bevel. I'm showing you the beautiful stencil 
um, houses with the hills and the gate. Yes, I'm very pleased with it. And then I'm going to, um, yeah, I wanted to show you the coloring underneath the black because you can do a card in black with this and will that ever stand out? Yes, so let's move on and we'll make an envelope. There you have it. So it's an A7, which is five and a half by seven inches. I'm going to look for that on my, uh, making sure that's right. I'm measuring this to make sure it's accurate because I want to make it just a tad bigger than the card that it says. You don't want to do it exact. You don't want to squeeze that in there because I do have the bevel and I do have the gussets in there. So I want a little bit of room. So I will just make it a little bit bigger. So I cut the paper at 10 and an eighth and it, by 10 and an eighth to get this which it says a7 on there that's where I knew it was a7 and then I score it at four and a half inches around the paper and if you have the we are memory keepers envelope maker it's fabulous it gives you all the info and it makes the perfect uh, envelope and I I thought I wanted to use that lime green but no 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 it's too elegant to use a bright paper you have to go with this like emerald green and yeah, making sure it's all, you know, punched down at four and a half inches and scoring it here. There you have it. It's beautiful. Scoring it at four and a half inches actually. And then I just took off the edges and I'm gonna, I always put the tape on with the card inside. Yes, I wanna make sure that it fits. I'm gonna cut that off. And then what happened is I put the tape too high and if you're not going to cut that top off, you're going to have to put something on the inside. So I just put some of this sticky paper. See how handy this came in for me? It was wonderful. This isn't like, you know, that you have to have this little gold piece in there. But I always say if somebody flips it open, uh, I don't want them to, you know, it to be stuck to the card. And uh, here I just had a little bit of the glue on there. So baby wipe, it dries on the cardstock wonderfully. Look at that. If you have any oils on your hands, the baby wipe will just lift it off if it's a good cardstock. So let's design this wonderful um, matching envelope for the card. And I get to use some products I had in my stash. Oh, I actually used my powder. Looky, looky, yes. Yes, I actually had that. I've had that. I think that's the first powder tool I ever bought when I started this journey five years ago. And um, I don't even know if it's been six years yet. But anywho, and I want to thank all my new subscribers. Wow. And my, my older subscribers that have stuck with me for my journey. Thank you so much. I can't believe I'm just shy of 19,000 subscribers. Boy, I'm going to have a good giveaway when we have the 20,000. Yes, I am starting to store away some stuff as we speak. It doesn't take long to get a thousand. <laughs> yeah, that's funny to say that. I just get excited when I get one, let alone saying okay. But you know, you have to have a goal. Yes, you have to dream big. And yep, and prayer helps too. So I want to thank everybody. I'm just making sure here, I put it on top of the black cardstock, making sure it goes down because we're going to have this gate. Have I gotten use out of this gate or what? But first the mark, yes, this watermark by LDRS Creative, we're just going to pounce it on there. It's so nice and juicy. It goes right in there. It actually leaked underneath, but I'm going to show you how you solve that problem. If you have an image, and look how juicy this is. You can see it. Wow, excuse, oh, there he goes. I gotta clean his paws. Always comes through when it's sticky, doesn't he? Yes, so now we're going to take this off. I gotta go and clean it. Uh, it's easy to clean. I think I just took a baby wipe to it. I'm gonna put the gold back in there because I don't want that sticky gold from off of the watermark uh, pad there. And you can see behind it, see how it did go behind the actual um, gate but all you do is put clear embossing powder you don't want to leave it like that because if there's nothing on that watermark pad uh, you know your Versamark watermark pad LDRS creative is called the watermark 
So when I say that, that's what it is. And it is juicy. So I just put, uh, you know, you don't want the person touching that. It'll stay wet like that if you don't put something over it. So I put clear embossing powder. Isn't that gorgeous? LDRS Creative White, or White, Clear Embossing Powder. And then heat set it because you're not going to see it. And uh, it's going to eliminate the problem of the watermark pad getting underneath all of that juicy ink. It's just a clear ink. And there you have it. That problem solved was, that was no problem whatsoever. I love coloring on this cardstock because it is, it has a pattern in this cardstock, you know, a little, little tiny pattern. Now, Burt's Bees and the Distress Glaze, these are the same things. Now, I wanted to show you this. The the Burt's Bees is identical to the glaze, but you get two times as much. You get that at any pharmacy, whatever. It's for your hands. It's a, it's almost like a beeswax. That's why it's probably called Burt's Bees. And you put it over top if you're going to mail this. You put it over top of your image. And I would put it over the whole front and the whole flap. But at the last minute, because I changed my mind on the actual uh, front of this card, I'm not going to mail it out. I'm going to put it in a box with a little gift and then just add this. But I wanted to show you that to glaze over top of this, you, you would want to do that if you're going to mail it. So everything, all of your coloring, all of your... Uh, heat embossing will just stay on there beautifully and look like it doesn't even have anything on it. It's wonderful. It's such a... And I wanted to show you the Burt's Bees uh, cream, wax, because it is two times the amount for the same price. And I always show you that if, if I get a good deal. But I love the glaze too, you know, so that's wonderful. It's like uh, the difference between having the... Um, that I show you the uh, oh the Versamark compared to having the uh, what is it my beacon glue yes if it's a good buy and you get more product I love to share it with you so here I'm coloring the deep green on the bow with the light green just to accent the gorgeous color in the paper see how it has a little pattern in that paper it's beautiful to color on you just get that little extra something on there. And oh, there's the stamp set. And I wanted to show you this. Somebody had asked me about what do you do when you get to the bottom of your beautiful uh, pencils and they're hard to hold. Well, you buy these holders. And what you do is it just, uh, you just screw it down, fit your pencil inside there, and it'll actually fit in your sharpener. I have this electric sharpener that I love, 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 because it stops when it gets to a point. But I wanted to show you, just stick it up really high uh, I like to have about, I think I have four or five of these. And uh, you'll get them at your stamp store or online. And you just screw that in there and you work with it. You just, you know, look it. And you use the bottom of that. It's metal. It's beautiful. Oh, I'm just emptying out my um, electric sharpener. And it's a boss stick. You can get this at any stationery store. That's where I got mine. And it stops at the point for you. And look at that. I can even, yeah. I Once I get down to about half the size of the pencil crayon that I'm using, in this case it's the Prisma, you want to have these little uh, screw-on extenders because it does extend the life of your pencil. And you pay quite a bit for them, so you want to use every little bit of it. Yes. So here we are on the flap. I'm going to put three carats because it's an odd number. If you're new to stamping, uh, it's pleasing to the eye to have an odd number. And you're a 24 carat friend. I just, on my acrylic block, I just made it curved and looky looky. Yes, I stamped it over top of my tracing paper to make sure it was going to look even first. And then I went to the actual envelope paper and here I'm just taking kind of like a burnt a burnt amber 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 and uh, with the yellow it just kind of tones it down so it's not very vibrant because the cardstock is just vibrant enough isn't that cute 
Then I brightened it up so that it looked like I had shading on the first uh, go round of coloring. And there I'm, we're going to make the scene on the bottom. I put, yes, I had to take one of them off because I thought I'm not going to go all the way across with carrots. I'm going to put, it has a care, it has a bunny face in this stamp set. It has everything, I'm telling you. So I just took my finger and rubbed off the watermark ink and went across it with, see, I had the bunny at one end of my acrylic block. This is a pretty flat, thin acrylic block too. i surprised it works so well. And then I'm used to working with thick uh, ones. So yeah, you can see that I haven't wiped off all of my uh, powder before I embossed there on the front, but we will wipe her all down when we're done. So I put four on one side, I think, to make it uneven. I think I put three on the other side, or four and four, I can't remember. And I can't see it. Raise it up, here. Yes, it was four and four on there. And then that's eight, and then my bunny makes it an odd number, which is nine. And if you raise it up, Carol, everybody would see how pretty that looks. There we go, yes. We're gonna heat set that. And I love the and the flap having the carrots on it. It just really it was inspiring to look at that set and create. That's the beauty of making cards and envelopes, isn't it? You get to put your own touch, your own creativity on the card, and in this case, the envelope as well. So I'm going across and going to color them. And uh, yeah, look at that little bunny head just peeking out on the bottom. <laughs> Isn't that cute? And if you wanted to add the little body on the bottom, you could take your gold signal pen and just add two lines to make it look like he's got a body. And I took my dollar store when nothing's a dollar cheek brush, and that's what I'm using. I don't wipe away. If my pencil breaks or chips, wipe it with uh, a fluffy brush because you don't want it to make a mark. And uh, yeah, there's the gray. I'm using the gray instead of the white. Actually, I think I use gray and white. And then the pink, so cute. I'm sorry it's not in frame. I don't know what I was thinking, but it's wonderful to create on an envelope too, where everything, and then when you close it, look at this. Isn't that sweet? Oh, and then I put the bird on his ear. It had a little bird. And I thought, where am I gonna put that birdie? And of course, on his ear. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, I'm just taking all the powder off with my blush brush. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to do some, uh, just some freehand calligraphy. Oh, after I put the little birdie on his uh, ear. I think I put the bird on the ear and now the heart's going up. You know, just blowing with some love. I'm just putting the love out there. And uh, yeah, and then gold, of course. It's like you can make your card gold and white and then do all of your color on the envelope. And I'm just going with my pokey tool to make sure before I set it, the powder's where it want, it should be. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, an envelope. And here's where I thought I'm going to freehand with my white. I used a pencil first. And then I'm just doing some calligraphy, you know, some old uh, calligraphy on here. And I was going to put the person's name on here that I was going to send it to. And then I thought, you know what? I'm not going to do that because it's supposed to be a surprise who I'm sending this to. But I have, I started it and then I thought, okay, Carol, you have to rub it out. So I grabbed my uh, eraser and I think it's the one you can see that I went across and made my lines but I cover it because that's what we card makers do right we cover all of our mistakes nobody's the wiser I took my eraser um, it was the one with the grid in it you know and I just took the D off and went across there and now I'm just trying to figure out okay do I want to put a bit of this copper color behind the vellum and I chose not to. It just took away. It just really flattened out the design of this envelope. I didn't like the look. So I said, no, I, I just wanted to show you in case you like it, you could do that. And, and then I was going to put the copper on the, um, the actual edging on it like that. 
but the copper just really took away from the gold. It just was too overpowering. I didn't like it at all. So I took both of them out, but it's good to stick this aside and use it on another project. It just, the elegance was taken away as soon as you put a harsh color on there. So I put it down with my mini dots on the back, my little glue dots, and here I'm just putting the bunny in the center because I will put the name all the way across of who I'm sending it to, if I want to do that. If I want to do that, I don't know yet. And uh, the bunny's just, and if you're putting it in as a gift, you don't need to put a name on it because they're getting the little package and they're going to know, oh, that card's for you. <laughs> yeah. And see, even erasing it like that, you cover it up. And 40 pound vellum is perfect because you can't see through it. It really has a nice look. It does hide it. So um, I'm just making a little bit. It was, I stamped it just uh, oh, a wee bit up, you know. So all I did was put a bottom on there, and it's still, I followed the edge. That wasn't good. So I went and put some hashtags on the bottom of it. I'm just adding these glue dots to the back on every corner, and you'll see me go back with the uh, Versamark pen and hashtag it. That takes away everything from the eye. I just make a straight line going across, then I'll hashtag it, and nobody be the wiser that it was stamped just a tad crooked. You could put a hill on there. You could uh, stencil some, you know, that little one little hill on there if you wanted to. But look at that. It looks straight and it, you get that wood look with the hashtagging of the bottom of the stamp. And there you have it. Now I'm running right now to get my teensy weensy mini pearls. Mini pearls. And mini pearl. That just rings the bell there. Is that the lady that had the hat with the price tag hanging off? Is that mini pearl? I think so. So I'm using my mini pearls. Howdy! Yep, that was her. <laughs> it's all coming back to me now. Yeah, my brains are coming back. And I put that on there. I was going to put the name in pearls, but no, it just takes away from the card altogether. Just little details add to this envelope and your card. It works out perfect. So there you have it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me for my LDRS Creative Design Team project. I love working with LDRS Creative. I'm really grateful to Angie and to the design team members and the creators and designers of these sets. So I'll show you how, yeah, you want to put your scene this, yeah, this way. And then I will put some double-sided tape to close it when I go to use it, or you can use Velcro, so many ideas there. And there's the card. Thank you. Have yourself a blessed week as always. Thank you for subscribing, and thank you for your comments. I love getting to know my subscribers. So I'd like you to check out the shop and check out this new release, and you will love it. There you have it. See you, everybody. Take care now. Enjoy the pictures.